Hello, it's Philip Taylor speaking from Richmond Green Chambers in London. Today I'm looking at a book which has come to us from the Legal Action Group, which is the Access to Justice charity. This book is an old favourite, if I can put it that way. It's one that has appeared in a number of editions. This is now the third edition of Extradition Law, A Practitioner's Guide. It's not a big book, but it's a very important one. It's been written by Edward Grange and Rebecca Niblock. Elizabeth wrote the original draft uh, after a discussion that we had about the book, having gone through it, and the title we've given, A Perfect Introduction to the Complexities of Extradition Law, now in a new third edition, and it's for 2021. Now, there's the actual um, book itself, there's the front of it, there's the spine, and there's the back. This book came to us recently, I'm recording it in the autumn of 2021, and at that time, obviously, it's only just recently arrived. Um, you can see that the, uh, from the index, that it, following the house style of lag, it's by paragraph numbering, the index. And at the front, you've got the standard blurb, there's some information about the authors, and you've also got uh, the actual front page there. You can see in addition to that, it's available as an e-book as well. That's all of the blurb. The first edition came out in 2013 and the second in 2015. So there's been a little bit of a gap. Then uh, Mrs. Justice Arbuthnot, who we'll feature in a minute, uh, Emma Arbuthnot has produced an excellent forward uh, to the book. And uh, you've then got, um, she's uh, actually referred to as the Senior District Judge, Chief Magistrates, between 2016 and 2021. And then, of course, she was elevated <coughs> to the um, High Court bench. Then you've got a preface. Uh, it's also worth reading because it sets out August 2021, what have, what's happened to change uh, the pre from the previous edition, and then acknowledgements from Ed and Rebecca, as they call themselves. And then you've got the content section there, see quite a lot of information all about extradition. Actually for someone who's relatively new to it I think it's quite a useful link with the concept of extradition and the human rights issues and proportionality. Then you've got uh, section 11, well, chapter 11 on appeals and then ancillary matters, the Interpol and various other things. And then you've got um, a large number of appendices at the back. That's in the shaded area there. And then you go in from there, you've got some cases, of course. And after the cases, you've got some statutes. Then after the statutes, you've got a little bit of SI, statute instruments. Then you've got a little bit of European legislation. Then you've got, after that, is there anything else? Yes, you've got the international agreements as well, <coughs> which, of course, are quite important, of course, in this area. Um, just some, a lot of publicity about extradition, as I'm sure you will know. You've then got the abbreviations, which I think are very helpful because there are a lot of them. There we go. And then you get into the standard structure for a legal action group publication. You've got a chapter, you've got a little mini index for the chapter, and then you've got the work itself. <coughs> Excuse me. You've got um, paragraph numbering at the sides there, and you've got the footnoting, which you can probably see there. Now, the chapter, the mini index there, should actually work nicely with what you're looking for in the main index at the back. So you should be able to navigate your way through pretty quickly. Um, you've also got very useful things, which are the emotional things, some, the stuff you get in the newspapers. The initial hearing in arrest warrant cases, for instance, that's just setting out um, uh, one area which would be of perhaps of interest to quite a lot of more general readers. But what do we get with the book? <coughs> well, for novice practitioners to the more experienced practitioners, and indeed duty solicitors to uh, new um, appropriate um, judges in this area, or anybody involved professionally in the complexities of extradition law, this book, we think, will provide um, invaluable um, information, both as an authoritative work of reference and as a tool for confident and competent uh, practice. <coughs> Excuse me. 
And that's what you're getting because, as I say, it's in the third edition. There have been quite a lot of cases uh, which have been in the newspapers nationally about uh, extradition law. And of course, it is, it is a problem for uh, a lot of people uh, who have different views about what we should be doing. But this tries dispassionately to set out exactly where we are at the moment with, um, with the current rules. Because the expert authors, they call themselves Ed and Rebecca, that's Edward Grange and Rebecca Niblock, remind us in their preface that the six-year gap between the publication of the second edition, and that's in 2015, and its new one, is one might say the obvious consequence of the vote in June 2016 to leave the EU, European Union, that's known as Brexit. And of course, that has, plus the other problems we've had, the pandemic caused a few problems. I've got a quote here. We had four and a half years to speculate on the EU's extradition arrangements in the EU 27, uh, what the EU, in the EU 27 would be, they point out. And that, re that is referring specifically, in particular, to the Trade and Cooperation Act uh, being in a, in a final agreement. And of course, that um, sort of quote, current arrangements replicate the features of the European arrest warrant to a very large extent. And there has been, of course, a great deal of concern about what was going to happen to the European arrest warrant. Well, the book will give you the guidance you need at the moment, subject to whatever is going to happen in the future. And I think we are looking very much at where the law stands, because my view is that the law, as is, is stated here, is probably in the summer of 2021. Now, as Mrs Justice Arbuthnot explains in the foreword, that the approach to arrest warrants under the uh, Trade and Cooperation Act is a new area of law which will be of particular significance in the months and years to come. And I'm glad she said that because she was involved when she was the Chief District Judge Criminal Cases, Criminal Courts, to, to be at the forefront of this. And just to confound and compound realities in the practice of this area of law, along came the coronavirus, creating general havoc to everybody across the planet and necessitating quite profound changes in the way in which extradition cases are presented and are heard. And I think, again, because of the problems we've had, there's been a tremendous difficulty with court hearings. Obviously, many of the ones I've done have been by Zoom, very few attended parties hearings, and obviously things have been um, difficult. Now, we are hoping, with the new law year just about to start on the 3rd of October, that things will change. And it's very reassuring, then, um, to hear from Mrs Justice Arbothnot with her comments that this succinct and authoritative guide, quote, packs a big punch, uh, as it is, takes you by the hand and guides you through the pitfalls that await the unwary, and that's exactly what they do. It includes, of course, the complexities of, for example, the case management, um, legal aid, skeleton arguments, and certainly much, much more um, processes involved in dealing with an extradition matter. It's another superb and useful initiative from the Legal Action Group, and it sets out the law for those arrested after 11pm on the 31st of December 20. 20. And as I say, the law is probably as set out round about the middle of 2021. It's definitive, it's practical, very much up to date um, for what you'd expect. And it's a book which can be considered truly indispensable, I think, for any and all practitioners in this field. The date of publication of the paperback, third edition, is cited as at the 10th of September 2021. Let's just have one last look at it. It's a slim volume. There it is. <clears throat> you see there. Now you can't really make out much of the inverted colour there of what's in it uh, on the back. <coughs> but it does set out the various contents, which I'm not going to go into um, here. Let's open it in the middle. Human rights and proportionality. There we go. That's the big one. And you've got here, you can see the paragraph numbering. You can see the footnoting, again the paragraph numbering again from the inside there, and the footnoting. A lot of information throughout. 
a lot of detail and of course the important information on the, in the appendices is the relevant legislation and guidance. There's a bail checklist as well which I think is also very helpful depending on what sort of work you're doing. All in all I'd like to thank um, Ed and um, Rebecca um, very much indeed as they style themselves for producing this um, new edition. Thank you and also thank you to LAG. You do make our lives a great deal easier with these excellent books. Thank you to all. Bye-bye.